Hi, you might be wondering about the cloudy days in San Diego in June 2019. We've seen a lot of them. In fact, we recorded 16 cloudy days. That means a day where it started off cloudy and ended out cloudy, where we didn't see really any clearing or sunshine. Now, when you compare it to prior, June 2018, last year, we had 14 days. But also note that this year we've seen zero clear days that means there's been no days that have started off clear and ended clear so we have in general seen more clouds the satellite really tells a story for us here's an image of a visible satellite from june 27th and you can see clearing was everywhere except for the immediate coast where clouds were hanging out in the california bite that's the marine layer we call it when we look at every single day, that can really show the details of cloud cover along our coast. Now, what's normal for our region? Well, cloudy days are normal in San Diego, especially in May and June. We call it May gray, June gloom. But clouds occur all throughout the year. Something to note is that cloud cover usually becomes less and less as we go into the summer and early fall. However, it doesn't mean we don't have cloudy mornings. You can see partly cloudy days actually peak out in July on average. The clear days are most noticeable though on average. We typically see very few clear days. That's clear in the morning, clear in the afternoon in May and June. And we'll look at some of the reasons why, and specifically June 2019. How about our temperatures? Have the temperatures been affected by the extra clouds in June 2019? Well, not really. The month of June is shown on the left-hand side, and most of California is running quite a bit above normal, with temperatures just slightly above normal here in far southern California. If you look all the way back the past 60 days, however, it tells a little bit different story where temperatures have been cooler than normal across Southern California. That's mainly because of the cool, wet month of May 2019. Note consistently across the Pacific Northwest, temperatures are running above normal, and we'll talk more about that, and below normal across the Great Basin. Can we blame this or attribute this to ocean temperatures? Well, in the California Bight, currently, the ocean temperatures are running right about normal. There is warmer than normal, warmer than average temperatures in our ocean, sitting off Point Conception. But what is really noticeable, and this continues to be a trend over the past couple of years, is much warmer than average sea surface temperatures in the North Pacific. We'll talk more about that and also the much warmer than normal conditions across most of the Central Pacific. If you look at the bottom of the screen, that's the El Nino zone, and really not much is going on down there near the equator. Now, what has been going on over the past couple months? So since May 1st, we've basically had a storm track going up over the Northern Pacific and then diving across California. It really shows up across the northern part of the Pacific or the Gulf of Alaska where the lack of storms in that area is showing up as the lack of coolness in the atmosphere and basically upper level high pressure blocking those storms, allowing cooler air to come across the Great Basin as shown to the right. This is an average of the pattern since May 1st and really stands out as a significant stagnant persistent weather pattern and that's really what's causing the really warm conditions across the Pacific Northwest and also helping to warm up those ocean temperatures we just looked at in the northern Pacific now what about just for June 2019 well the weather pattern has weakened across our region and we're no longer getting any precipitation other than coastal drizzle across Southern California However, the same upper level high pressure area blocking the jet stream remains. So much warmer than normal conditions in the atmosphere, 
across the Pacific Northwest and North Pacific, translating to warmer than normal temperatures across Northern California and the Pacific Northwest. That's the upper level high pressure. That's really what's controlling our weather and resulting in this persistence of cooler temperatures over the Great Basin and that very deep marine layer. That deep marine layer is the result of high pressure to our north and a weak upper level trough during the month of June. Not enough to generate rain, but enough to keep that marine layer very deep and persistent across Southern California. So basically we're caught in between no man's land, between a big high pressure to our northwest and deeper low pressure across the interior west. Don't forget, the month of May was really wet. This shows it here, three to five times as much precipitation. It normally doesn't rain much across the dark blue areas in May, and all those areas received significant rainfall from several different storms in the month of May. And very important to mention was the temperatures during the month of May. And this has really continued um, across the interior Great Basin, but not across Southern California in June. But during the month of May, temperatures were near record cold, several degrees below normal across our mountain areas and our interior deserts. Coastal areas in Northern California not affected that much by the storm track that was active in May, but our mountain regions near record cold, several degrees below normal for the entire month of May for average temperatures. Now let's look back last year to see what was going on in June 2018. Always good to compare the prior month or the prior year to see what is different and why we're seeing differences in temperatures and cloud cover. Upper level high pressure, instead of being over the northern Pacific or anywhere in the Pacific, was basically anchored for most of June across California, as shown here in the interior west. Really a different 180 degree weather pattern and a big shift in the weather pattern compared to this time last year, June 2018. How can you track the recent climate? You can look at these websites here from NOAA and be sure to look at the data specifically for California or Western region or take a look at the climate across the entire country at a glance at these links shown here. If you're interested in climate outlooks, future predictions of the weather over the next couple of weeks or next couple of months, be sure to look at the link at the bottom. Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful in understanding our recent climate.